what is the future of healthcare? And how can we create systems that actually cure people instead of just treating symptoms? That is what we are going to be talking about at the upcoming QHA conference. And we're going to be bringing you some of the most powerful holistic health practitioners, healers in the world. And we're going to be talking about how can we create a system where people can actually thrive and maybe you have some ideas about this. If you would like a free ticket, just comment QHA below or send me a message QHA and I'll send you all the details. So my name's Luke Scott the third, and I am a quantum healer. I help people actually heal things, upgrade their life, physical health challenges, mental health challenges. There is this thing called Clark's Law and it says any sufficiently advanced technology is almost indistinguishable from magic. And this is where the world is going right now. We are finally seeing, because of the internet and the ease of access to information, that there are cures out there for all the major diseases that people suffer with. And it is amazing and astounding to me when I had this realization that the systems that we have in place right now are designed to keep us sick and to keep us as customers for life. And it's not the fault of the people who work in the systems necessarily. Some of them are completely oblivious to this, this system. Let me explain. So one of my family members is actually a, a medical doctor, a GP in the UK. They only have 10 minutes per patient. 10 minutes, that's it. And they're penalized if they spend too long with patients. So how can you really get to know someone in 10 minutes, what's happening in their life so you can give them the best advice? And one of my family members, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and he was medicated most of his life. And, and by the end of his life, he was on about 40 tablets a day. And I spoke to one of his doctors and I said, what is the path to get him off these medications or to at least some of them? And they said, there is no path. He will be on these medications forever. Now, those medications wreaked havoc on his system. Some of them made him constipated. So he had to take diuretics to make himself even be able to go to the bathroom. Some of them sped his brain up. Some of them slowed his brain down. It was a constant chemistry experiment just to uh, balance out all the contradictions from the tablets he was taking. So what is the future of healthcare? There are loads of different ideas and options, but my belief after helping people for over eight years now, helping hundreds of clients one-on-one, -on -one, helping thousands of people online, the future of healthcare is any modality, any tool that brings people back to their own innate wisdom, that brings people back to their truth because whatever dis-ease you have, whatever illness you have, whatever thing is in your life that is causing you challenges right now, it's there for some kind of reason. Whatever you have, whether it's genetic or whether it's environmental or however you it came into your existence, there is a reason that it's there. And I'm not talking about anything spiritual here, what we do at the QHA, at the conference, this is for anybody, like you don't have to have any kind of belief system just talking pure science here, your body is one of the most advanced technologies. Remember, any sufficiently advanced technology is almost like magic. You know, we're still figuring out what the human body does. Most people have no idea. It's like the most advanced machine vehicle ever made. And most people treat it terribly. So if you think of like the most expensive sports car, just as a thought experiment, imagine your body is like a sports car. You know, we have parts now we can even get replacement parts, right? We can get transplants if we need to. It's not very dissimilar. If you had the most expensive sports car in the world, what would happen if you put the wrong fuel into it? If you ever done that, if you ever put petrol into a diesel car, it, it breaks down. What would happen if you didn't put the right lubricants in it, the engine oil, that kind of stuff, the car would break down. Now, most people, because we're not given a, a, an instruction manual for our vehicle, most people take terrible care of it, especially when they're younger. And then they try and play catch up in their adult life. 
and once you come back into your own inner wisdom because your body knows what it needs to come back into balance and i do hypnotherapy i, I do this it's called cure it and we cure cure it right whatever is happening in your life we cure it with cure it so it's a type of hypnotherapy mixed with quantum healing and it helps you get to the root cause of why the thing is showing up in your life now every time we do this whatever the thing is the person's challenged with there's always a way to improve their life situation if they are suffering and I mean any kind of disease that you're talking about. I have to be careful what I say because there are some rules and regulations on social media about what you can and can't say and what health claims you can and can't make. So I'm being quite diplomatic here. But anything like my big awakening around this was in 2016 when I met someone who had cured somebody of stage four pancreatic cancer. They were told it was inoperable. They were told they were going to die. Now, this person didn't want to die. And this happens a lot when you get pushed to the edge and there's no other options. And the, the Western medical system says there's nothing we can do. Then people go and find the holistic options. Now, what does holistic mean? It means whole. It means looking at every aspect in your life. Why did they have that issue? So this person worked with them to get to the root cause of it. It was an emotional thing. It was some trauma that they had that, that festered because energy can never be created or destroyed. It's only transferred. That's just physics. So if you have this festering energy of some fear, trauma, grief, like anything that's not being processed, how is that energy going to leave your system? especially so many people now we wear even rubber soled shoes like we are insulated like there's nowhere for that charge to go so he helped him he he did his own methods similar to what we do with cure it but there's so many different ways out there let me know if you are a practitioner of some kind of modality let me know if you know about holistic healing ayurvedic healing like this is not new stuff this is what our ancestors did before allopathic medicine before petrochemical pharmaceuticals became so popular now there is absolutely a place and a time for the western medical system like it can be phenomenal when it's used in the right way especially in acute situations you know if you get stabbed or shot or you break up your leg you know that's a phenomenal resource that we have here in in the uk and i know in other countries you have you have private medical systems and other ways that you can do it when you combine that with the holistic, with the quantum healing, everything is beautiful. And um, quantum, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know about quantum physics and quantum mechanics, it just means at the smallest observable particle level. So it basically means at the energy level, because if you zoom in on yourself with a microscope, you are just particles zooming around. If you zoom in on a rock with a microscope, you zoom on in your bones, your bones are just particles zooming around. So quantum healing looks at healing from the energy level and not necessarily just seeing us as a physical being because with this person who I just told you about, the root cause of their issue was an energetic imbalance. I can tell you about seeming miracles, people in wheelchairs being able to walk, Right, after just a few hours of realizing what the root cause of their issue is. Someone who was bed bound for eight years with ME and after four hours, they were completely healed. Now, there's so many stories, hundreds, thousands of them, maybe more out there. I geek out about this stuff because this is what hooked me in. Because I'd been to conventional therapy, I'd been in the the Western medical system for years from issues I had in my childhood, and it did not help me. One of the challenges I had throughout most of my life was eczema. And I remember I would scratch my skin because it was so painful. I couldn't sleep. I would take baths with all these emollients at the at 2, 3 a.m. in the morning just to try and get some peace. And then it almost drove me to the brink of insanity. You know, some days it's so bad. And I went to the doctor and they gave me a cream and they said, try this out and come back in three months. Now, the cream didn't help. It did nothing. 
but I kept trying because the doctor told me to and I kept trying and then I went back and three months later they gave me another cream and that one did nothing. Not once did the doctors ask me, what's happening in your home life right now? Is there anything in your home life that might be irritating you? Because what you often find when you go into the root cause of the issue is things like rashes that are very irritating. It's your body's way of processing some anger or irritation that's under the surface. Not always, but often. If they had asked me that, they would have seen I had a lot of anger issues and that was my body's way of bringing my attention to the anger and this is what I do with my clients. And let me know again, put QHA below if you want a, a completely free ticket to the upcoming conference. It's two hours. We're going to go deep into all things holistic healing. Anyone is welcome. If you are any kind of practitioner of any modality, you are going to absolutely love it. If you're curious, you're going to love it too. Put a comment below if you're curious. Maybe you think you might like to become a healer. Maybe you think, ah, oh, that could be amazing. I'll let you know the best modalities that I have tried. I've tried so many. I am a hypnotherapist. I've done all different kinds of energy healing. I've done so many different things. I'll let you know the best ones, anyone who, who sends QHA. If you want to try this, by the way, if you have something happening in your life and you would like to try it, I have a completely free session. I'm willing to gift to every single one of you. Just message me, say free cure it session, or you can comment below. I'll pop it in the chat somewhere. You can just go and click that. I've already made it. It's fully recorded. You can go and try it. You just plug in your issue, whatever the thing is that you're struggling with, whether it's physical health issues, mental health issues. You know, if you have, if you have depression, do you believe that that is just randomly there? Or do you believe it's there because there's something in your life that's not in alignment right now. There's something in your life that's not in harmony with your well-being. Could be your job, could be trauma from your childhood, it could be your family relationships, it could be what you eat. I mean, what we eat is a, just a massive section. Now, when you go to your doctor, because they only have 10 minutes, and you, they ask you, you know, what's your diet like? Are you eating? They're just checking, are you eating what's in the food pyramid. They call it a balanced diet. In America, it's called the SAD, the, the, the standard American diet, the SAD diet. It's all about eating foods which actually are not that healthy for you. The food pyramid is a massive area of questioning. Most people I know, the healthiest people I know, think it is an absolute disgrace that it was introduced into the school system and the hospital systems. 100% whole foods is what I would recommend. Like no junk foods, none of those chemicals, because a lot of them are brand new. You know, it was after World War II that seed oils were introduced into our diet. They used to be used as engine oil. I know we're talking about our body as a vehicle. What happens if you put engine oil into the fuel tank of a car? Let me know in the comments. That's what we do. That's what we eat. That's what I ate for most of my life. No wonder our vehicle is bunged up. So one of the things that's also a really interesting part of the future of healthcare for me is what we call prevention instead of treatment. This is what happens in a lot of Eastern medical practices. So you look ahead, you think, okay, before I'm unwell, like while I'm healthy, are there things I can do to maintain my health so I don't need to get backed up that oh, they do um autopsies uh, on people and it is insane now you might never have heard this before and it's a little bit a little bit graphic perhaps but when they do autopsies in america inside your gut so inside your belly people have up to 20 pounds which is like 10 kgs of what's called calcified fecal matter calcified fecal matter it's basically hard poop that's what's inside most people's gut so if you've ever seen a uh, dog poop on on the sidewalk on the on the pavement after you've left it for too long and it goes white 
that that's what's inside your belly if you're eating the standard diet because your body can't process a lot of the things and you get this stuff inside most doctors by the way and i've tested this on quite a lot of doctors they don't even know what your gut microbiome is test your doctor with that ask them hey how do i keep uh, my gut microbiome healthy they don't even know what it means it's the, the bacteria that live inside your gut that help your body process foods. It's phenomenal. And um, one of my family members is currently training to be a doctor. So I know this as a fact, and many other people will share this with you. There's lots of doctors who have now had the awakening that we need to combine holistic practices with the allopathic Western medicine. And when we do that, we can actually give our patients the best treatment. How much nutritional training do you believe the average doctor gets in the UK? They do six years ish in school. Let me know in the comments, how many days, weeks or months of nutritional training do you think that they get? two hours or less in six years, two hours training on nutrition. And what are they told? Make sure they're eating the basics. Make sure they are eating a balanced diet of grains, meat, dairy. <laughs> it's insanity. That's, that's what you get. Now, a lot of doctors are very clued up. You know, they're interested in what they do and they go and they actually find out unbiased information about different alternative options so kudos to any doctors if any of you are doctors here come and join the conference again just message me qha you will be so welcomed let's come and expand your your knowledge um i'm doing it with my amazing business partner his name's artemis kazane he has done over forty thousand client sessions he has so much knowledge about Ayurveda, holistic practices, everything you can think of. And he's going to be sharing his visions and how we can help doctors, nurses, medical professionals to give their patients the best care. So you are so welcome if that is you or if you know anyone who might love to come to the QHA conference, please do drop me a message. You can also um, find us if you want to on our Facebook group. So it's called the Quantum Healers Alliance. You can just search on Facebook, Quantum Healers Alliance. Everybody is welcome. Every kind of holistic health practitioner, whatever modality you practice. And even if you're just curious about quantum healing and holistic health, please do come join us. You are welcome as long as you're aligned with this vision of making the world a better place and improving the healthcare system. So yeah, nutrition, huge topic. I am currently, as of right now, on day 17 of eating 100% fruits. So fruits are very easily digested by our bodies. Fruits thrive, uh, we thrive on fruits as humans. They are very satisfying, very tasty, very nutritious. And um, some of my friends have done uh, 100 days on fruits. One of my friends last year did 160 days just on fruits, a complete cleanse of your body. A lot of people do something called intermittent fasting, which is only eating for six hours a day. And you give your body a rest for 18 hours a day. And there's so many things around nutrition. Imagine your car. You leave the engine on constantly. How long will that car last before it breaks down? Your digestive system. Most people start eating as soon as they wake up and they, they eat right before they go to bed. And I used to do this. This is what bodybuilders told me to do to be strong. I've been bodybuilding since I was like 17 years old. The misinformation I got is insane. Or taking me telling me to take protein shakes and all these supplements pretty much all the healthiest people i know right now after a workout eat fruits that's what is optimal for replenishing your body after a workout 
And for any of the doctors and the people who are um, nutritionalists who are listening, you know that fruits have all the amino acids that your body needs to make proteins because when you eat protein, your body cannot use that. It has to break that protein down into amino acids. They're like the Lego blocks. And then it builds them back up again into proteins that you can use. And so this is insane because when you eat fruits, you just cut out the middleman. But why are we not taught this in schools? Now, you don't have to be fruitarian. I know lots of super healthy people who are fully carnivore. I, I know lots of people who eat a whole foods plant based diet who are super healthy. The main thing that I've noticed is they all eat whole foods. So junk food is not a big part of their diet, if in their diet at all. Why do you think we are hooked on sweets and crisps and chocolates when we're a kid? On purpose? Imagine the future of healthcare. Instead of adverts about cancer on TV, they have adverts on TV about wellness. Everywhere you go, here's how to actually be healthy. On all the TV adverts, instead of adverts for burgers and sodas and everything else. Can you imagine? Your subconscious mind is so powerful because whatever it's programmed with, that runs in the background. So when we're children, we're programmed with seeing these things and it, it becomes addictive. They're very clever marketers. They know exactly how to hook children in. So we're very careful with our children. I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. We're very careful with the kinds of adverts that we let them see and, you know, we try and minimize their exposure to these things because I'm a hypnotherapist. So I see, I'm like, ah, oh, they're using a hypnotherapy technique there. Ah, oh, they're using using this da 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 to anchor that into people's heads. So when they see those yellow arches, it's there. They're associating that with happiness. It's called a happy meal. And then they know, oh, and my experience as a child, my parents took me there. You know, where I've got, I had to break free. I had to end the hypnosis of associating that place with happiness. You all know the place I'm talking about. There's another company that get so excited around Christmas. Their branding is red and they have a big truck that goes around saying the holidays are coming and all their adverts are about living, laughing, loving. And they always put on their banners love and then their name. And I won't say their name, but you know which soda company I'm talking about. So subconsciously, when you're sad, you reach out for their product because you feel like it's going to make you happy. This is the way that they've programmed us to be sick. And it makes you sick physically, but it also makes you sick mentally because in the future of healthcare, we're going to free people from their addictions. Because whatever you're addicted to is controlling your life. So can we help you end your addictions with hypnotherapy? It's so easy. You can cure someone's biggest fear in like 30 minutes, even faster sometimes. It depends how ready they are to let it go. Um, people with a fear of spiders, and we've literally done this in our events. Someone had a, a fear of snakes. And in 20 minutes, we completely got rid of their fear. And then they were holding a snake, right? And one of my friends does this with spiders. People come to his workshop. By the end of the workshop, they can hold a tarantula, right? This is what's possible when you learn how to use your technology. This is all here, right? This is all possible. But most people don't ever learn how to reprogram their brain because there's certain things you have to do. There's a certain kind of brainwave state called theta brainwave state, it's a very slow brainwave state that allows you to reprogram your body and reprogram your nervous system. And if you type in on YouTube, Luke Scott anxiety testimonial, you'll see, again, I have to be careful what I say on social media, but you'll see someone with crippling anxiety and just using this technique, we're able to help them release it. Imagine your whole life or years spent in anxiety. 
when you're in that theta brainwave state, you can release anything. Don't have to hold on to the traumas from your childhood anymore. You can reprogram how you feel about them. You don't have to hold on to grief from anyone who's passed. Because again, we're not taught as a society how to process grief. We have no training on that. Did you have any classes on that in school? It's one of like the fundamental human experiences. And when I was in therapy for years, they just take you around and around the same thing because they don't know how to access theta brainwave state. There's so many ways that you can do this. So we're going to talk about all of this at the conference. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings on this. Just type QHA below or send me a message saying QHA if you would like to come. It would be my absolute pleasure to gift you a ticket, totally free. Come and see what we can do because the future of healthcare is about collaboration instead of competition. One of the big problems we've got with the healthcare system now is everybody's out to make a book, right? And the, the, the prices for treatment and medicine is insane. Like the prices for insulin in America for diabetics is insane. Now, you can go to a website called masteringdiabetes.org and they can give you some information about diabetes. Again, I have to be careful what I say. They can give you some information about diabetes if you do take insulin. That might completely change your life. And there's a documentary you can watch about this. It's called What the Health. So if you just type that in, that's on all streaming platforms, just What the Health. It's a 90-minute, I believe, documentary. And they have someone in that documentary who has diabetes. They go through a process, which I've already told you in this video what they do. And their whole life changes. So whatever issue you have, try this. Whether it's a psychiatric condition, a physical condition, emotional condition, or spiritual condition, if you believe in that stuff, just type in online how to cure and then put whatever your thing is and then put holistically. So how to cure whatever your thing is holistically and go and read the threads. Join some quantum healing groups on Facebook. Join the holistic health groups and ask in those groups, has anyone ever cured? And then put whatever the thing is holistically and post that in the groups and you will see people go, yes, 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 yes. And then you can ask them how they did it. Now, insurance companies will naturally guide you to what they call approved treatments. So... This is not medical advice, you know, disclaimer. Uh, please do your own research. But if you do have any conditions right now, something like cure it or quantum healing or hypnotherapy can be fantastic for you. Again, just drop me a message. I'll let you know more of the details. So what is the future of healthcare? Systems that actually treat and cure people instead of just treating symptoms education from when you're young on what actually helps your body to be healthy I'm talking about prevention looking ahead and seeing what the impacts of our actions can be before we get the disease we're looking at making this mainstream so on the TV and the adverts and the whatever it is in the schools, in the hospitals, you're taught how your body actually works. I'm going to drop this on you now. Let me know if you think your body works, okay? If you think you know how your body works. Who here knows about gut microbiome? Who has researched how to have a healthy gut microbiome so your body can digest food? Let me know if you've researched that. Let me know if you have researched your lymphatic system. So you know you have blood in your body. Your body filters around 20 liters, liters of lymphatic fluid every day. Do you know what lymphatic fluid is? Have you ever been taught that in school? The most successful or one of the most successful public speakers in the world, he's called Tony Robbins, 
every single day he jumps on a rebounder because it helps move your lymph around your body because most people's bodies are backed up it's kind of like plumbing you know pipes you know when your sink gets clogged up and the water rises most of you are clogged up because of seed oils processed foods all sorts of gunk and stuff that they put in them which is crazy by the way so some kind of detox or cleanse let me know if you know about your lymphatic system if you don't go research it yeah jumping on a rebounder doing inversion practices like handstands headstands uh, are phenomenal for that do you know that you are an electrical being so your body works because of the electrical charges that go through it. And when you wear shoes that are rubber insulated all the time, your body builds up that charge and it becomes inflammation. What percentage of people in the world are suffering with arthritis when they could go bare feet on the ground? Or you can get these earthing mats that plug into the, the wall socket when you touch them. You have a you have a meter in your hand that you can prove it. Okay, well, as soon as I touch the earthing mat or as soon as I put my feet on the floor, my electrical charge in my body can now go into the earth. And remember, energy can never be created or destroyed. It's only transferred. So working on that is very important. Most people, uh, you can go on YouTube and search for the earthing movie. And it's all a scientific documentary about earthing and grounding and they get people with arthritis really bad and, and 15 minutes a day on the earth grounded changes their life most people nowadays again very new phenomenon since electric lighting came in you know before electric lighting you had candles right when it got dark you basically go to bed but now people stay up crazy late and the light that's emitted is this kind of light called blue light. So you all have a blue light filter on your phone and on your laptop. You can get one for your TV too. When your body sees blue light, that's the kind of light that's emitted in the daytime. It stops your body producing melatonin and melatonin is really important for you to have deeper sleep. So. When it gets dark, the advice is don't have any blue light shining in your eyes. You can get these blue light glasses. Then your body can produce melatonin. But also, your body starts uh, the, the production of melatonin, like for sleep. It, you need to uh, not have eaten for three-ish hours. So most people eat right before they go to bed, and that affects the quality of your sleep. So a lot of my friends who are super healthy, they actually have their last meal at like 3 p.m. That's what I said about intermittent fasting. You maybe eat from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And you train your body that you have all the calories that you need, all the nutrients that you need in that window. So if they stop eating at 3 p.m., when it comes to sleep time, they are optimized. Have you ever thought about this before? How your relationship with light can affect, it's called your circadian rhythm. The most healthy people I know wake up when the sun rises or close to it. Because imagine you were an animal outside, you know, and when the sun rises, you get light shine on you. So you would wake up. When you rise and you get that sunlight in your eyes, first thing. So I will usually, even when it's snowing, go bare feet in the garden or find a patch of grass and I'll get sunlight in my eyes and I'll usually take my shirt off and get sunlight on my skin too. And that starts thousands of different reactions in your body that are beneficial to your health. So being grounded and having the sunlight come into your body has phenomenal benefits. Again, why are we not taught this stuff at school? Like the best medicines, sunlight, breathing, fresh air, oxygenating yourself. The air in our homes is often polluted and toxic. You can get these air filters for inside your house, but things like uh, fragrances, 
even your washing powder, candles that you burn, all these different things are toxic, unless you get non-toxic ones. So when you're breathing in the air in your home and um, your carpets, there's a lot of toxicity comes up from carpets and the paint on your walls and the building materials that your house is made from. I went to a whole seminar about this, about how the, the cheap building materials they make houses with uh, really damage our, our hormones and uh, it's called your endocrine. They're called endocrine disruptors. Right? It's insane. So going outside and breathing consciously. Most people breathe very shallow. Take a breath now, see where you breathe. Most people breathe in their chest. When you breathe into your belly, deep breath into the belly. And out. This is how babies breathe. You're using so much more of your lung capacity when you take belly breaths, or they're called abdominal breaths. When you breathe into your chest, that's very shallow. You're maybe using like 30% of your lung capacity. Do you ever get angry? You don't have to write in the comments. <laughs> Do you ever get angry? How do you breathe when you're angry? Very shallow. <laughs> Less oxygen. Do you make good decisions? When you breathe slow and deep, you make better decisions. You switch from being in fight or flight mode, which is where your sympathetic nervous system is activated. You switch into something called parasympathetic nervous system state, which is where your body can rest and relax. This is a very new thing again with phones and social media. We are like the most available generation ever. People can call us and text us anytime, pretty much. I always put my phone on flight mode when I go to sleep, top tip. Anyone can message us and set off an adrenaline reaction at any time of the night. Like most people are wired. You're constantly in stress mode. Your, your sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, used to be for when like you, you see a predator, you see a snake and you need to run away. The blood rushes to your, to your limbs so you can run. Now you get an email from your boss saying, I need to talk to you on Monday. <laughs> now you're in fight or flight mode for the whole weekend, right? Or you're driving to work and, and you're, you're late. You know, the, the cortisol in your body, the cortisol levels are so high. It shuts down so many of your beneficial systems. And then you drink coffee. I used to drink six cups of coffee a day when I worked in corporate. Insane. I used to drink two cups at a time because I became immune to it. And I would get home and I'd be shaking. And coffee is uh, the way your body digests it. It's a poison. It's, uh, it, it triggers adrenaline responses in your body when you have too much caffeine. Your body thinks it's being poisoned. It's a diuretic. It makes you poop, right? Why does it do that? Because your body's registering it as a poison. So people are over-caffeinated, constantly stressed. Their cortisol levels are so high. They're sat at a desk for eight hours a day. Totally unnatural. So, so they're very sedentary. So their body's, you know, repetitive strain from, you know, being at a desk and... What a wild way that we live. So taking time in nature, breathing, being connected electrically to the earth, getting proper sunlight, eating healthy foods, drinking clean water. Tap water is poisonous. I run seminars on water. The chemicals that are in tap water are insane. I'll tell you one. So to make the tap water alkaline, they put this chemical in it called LYE. It's called lye. If the tap water is too acidic, it would damage the pipes. So instead they put lye in it, which is poisonous, and then it damages your pipes. That's just one thing. Um, when you stop drinking tap water, so we have filters on all our, our plumbing, um, and even on our shower, you can get filtered shower heads. You can smell the chlorine in the water. It smells disgusting. But you're just you're you're just used to it. 
Maybe you go on holiday. If you've ever been to Spain, I can smell the difference. Their chlorine in the water is so strong. I can't, I would never drink English tap water, but not Spanish anyway. Um, so looking at how do we get fresh water? And then last thing I'll share, come to the QHA conference if you want more details. Again, just type QHA below. Tag anyone in this who might like to hear this information, by the way. Please share this far and wide. I'm going to upload this to all my channels. Um, I know that this is very brave stuff I'm saying, right? And let me know if you're a doctor or a nurse or a healthcare professional. Like, do you know this stuff? I've got a great friend who was a conventional medical doctor. He got to a point where he said, I cannot just keep giving people pills when I know I can cure what their issue is but I'm not allowed to give them a cure. He basically said that um, when you're a medical doctor in the UK, if someone has a, a disease, you have like a list of approved things you, for your insurance purposes that you're allowed to give them. Most of them are pharmaceuticals, but things are changing. The future of healthcare in the UK now, you can get energy healing uh, on their NHS, National Health Service. There are also places where you can get forest bathing recommended, which is where you go and spend a few hours in nature resetting yourself uh, they do this a lot in japan in japan they have these special medical devices in hospitals um, which give you the freshest water which clean your whole body out uh, one of my family members he had kidney disease and he had it to get a kidney transplant he went to ireland and they had this frequency device so they measured his kidney function before they then use this frequency device on him for so many minutes. And then you measure your kidney function after and his kidney function improved massively in a single session. So with these frequency devices, this is all a part of quantum healing, by the way, using energy, frequency, vibration, sound, all of this stuff to heal. Um, it's phenomenal, the technologies that are out there, but they're just not mainstream yet. So the future of healthcare is making everything I've just said here mainstream. But if you're moving your body in the right way, if you're eating well, if you're getting fresh air, breathing deeply and slowly, uh, turtles breathe very slowly and they live a very long time. There's a correlation maybe with, let me know what you think about that, to how slowly we breathe, how relaxed we are. There's this uh, documentary about blue zones, which is the areas where most people live to be over 100 years old. Most of the people who live to be over 100 years old, they have peace in their heart. They have compassion. They love their life. They're happy. When you're very stressed, your heart's beating so much. The cortisol all the time, like you wear yourself out, you know. How is your body now? Is your engine always revving? Like, do you ever give it a rest from food? Are you addicted to substances? I used to be addicted to alcohol and used to abuse drugs. And you know, I'm sober now, almost eight years since I managed to cure my addictions. Cured myself of my sugar addiction. I don't eat any sugar. I realized it had a hold over me. I don't drink any coffee. I realized it had a hold over me. I was like a different person. I was so agitated until I had a drug, caffeine. And let me know if you're wrestling with any of this. So what do you think is the future of healthcare? Maybe you can just implement a few of these tips. Pass this on to your children. Pass this on to your relatives. Pass this on to your loved ones. Come back to our natural ways. Sometimes taking a pill can be very helpful, short term, but it's not a long term solution. And again, whatever your dis-ease is, someone came to me, a client, they had an incurable disease. That's what they've been told. They were upset. They're like, I don't want to have this disease for the rest of my life. So I asked in one of my groups, has anyone ever cured someone of this disease? And people were just like, yep, 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 yep. The doctors have not been told about the cures for some reason. Like I said, one of my family members is training to be a medical doctor right now. So they showed me one of their lectures about cancer. Nowhere in that lecture do they go into 
What is the root cause of the cancer? Is it something in your environment that's causing it? Is it something you're consuming? Is it some trauma you've had? If you know anyone who has cancer, there's a great book called Dying to Be Me by Anita Morjani. Highest recommendation. I just watched one of her lectures. She does tours all around the world telling people if they have cancer, here's why. She shares her experience. She basically had cancer, died and healed herself. She like had this near-death experience, came back, healed herself. Her tumors disappeared within three weeks. Doctors have no idea how it happens. And she basically shares her testimony. And now she goes and helps people. You know, whatever, I mean, I literally mean whatever it is, even if it's a genetic condition, even if it's something that, you know, um, there's a, a, a doctor called Dr. Joe Dispenza. He was in an accident. He broke his spine, right? He was told he'd never walk again without surgery. He'd have to have these rods up his spine and he just refused. He used these techniques I'm telling you about. He used quantum healing, a kind of hypnosis, a kind of meditation. He got to the root cause of why his spine was there. Remember his your bones are energy, right? That's That's just quantum physics. So your bones are energy. So if you Try and think about a physical spine healing itself. That might be quite difficult. If you think about your spine as particles just zipping around, now we can start to play with that. We can start to imagine that. And in three months, he could walk again with no surgeries. Why is possible? The future of healthcare. I'm going to drop one more here, area here. I'm going deep here. Let me know if this is fun. One of the things that's suppressed since the early 1900s when petrochemicals, uh, petrochemical pharmaceuticals were widely introduced and, and uh, they started sponsoring the medical schools and then writing the textbooks and then pharmaceuticals became the main healthcare system in the West that we're educated on anyway. Of course, there are others, but they call them alternative. Now we're going to make that alternative into the mainstream again because that's what we did before. Um, but again, using pharmaceuticals when, when we need to, like amazing stuff with anesthetics and transplants and all these different things that we can do now and the diagnosis tools that we have, fantastic. So medicinal plants have been suppressed and even many of them made illegal. And there's this idea that for every disease, there's a plant that can cure it. And I've really been going deep into, it's called herbalism. So there are many great herbalists out there and they know, oh, you have this disease, use this plant. Animals do this naturally. If you ever watch a horse that's not feeling well, it knows which flowers to eat to make itself well. We are so disconnected from our intuition. This is why I say the future of healthcare is bringing us back to our inner wisdom because you know but you've forgotten how to talk to your body. If you have a headache, do you think you have that headache by accident? Or do you think you have that headache for a reason? For a reason, obviously. Yeah, the pain is your body's way of saying there is something out of balance right now. It's asking you to give it something. It might be a certain mineral. It might be a, some more hydration. It might be saying every time you go around to your friend's house, you get a headache because there's something in that house that's not good for you and it's affecting you. Maybe it's their Wi-Fi. Maybe it's their, their perfumes in the house. Maybe it's maybe it's the person. Maybe they're offloading onto you and, and your body doesn't like the things that they're saying. Or maybe maybe they have the TV on with the news and you don't even think about it. And then, you know, subconsciously all of that doom and destruction and stuff's going in your ears. And you walk out and you feel drained and exhausted. You, let me know if you've experienced that. Some people energize you and some people drain you. So do we ask our brain, oh, our head, oh, why do you have a headache? Do you need something or do we just take a pill? <laughs> Most people just take a painkiller, an aspirin, a paracetamol, whatever you call it. They never find the reason, so they don't get to the root cause of it. Whatever you have right now, if it's an ache or a pain, a dis-ease, an illness, find someone, whether it's me or another curate practitioner or a hypnotherapist or a, 
any any kind of holistic practitioner who can bring you to your own wisdom help you find the root cause everything will change and there might be some plants that can support you in that there probably will be this herbalist medicine is fantastic i've had life-changing experiences with all different kinds of plants and the question is why are a lot of healing plants made illegal it's a good question and here's another one a lot of healing plants are called weeds so in the uk we have this weed called a dandelion it grows in most people's gardens now it is medicine it's useful for so many things but we're taught growing up that they're useless we actually are told to kill them we just take them out and we just throw them away like they're abundantly all around we have another one in the uk they're called nettles and people can make soups out of them tinctures teas all sorts of stuff very very powerful healing properties we're told just to cut them with our lawnmower uh, you know, this is medicine that grows in our gardens and in our forests. Food can be your medicine. Fasting can be your medicine. Coming back to the natural ways, to your inner wisdom. We're going to go way deeper into this in the conference. I look forward to seeing you there. I'll send you all the details. Just drop me a message, comment below, invite your friends. I'm going to sign off here. Let's change the healthcare industry. Since I had my daughters, so I've got a four-year-old and a one-year-old, I am so fired up about this because when they are my age, how will the world be if we let things stay as they are? Because you have some knowledge, you have some wisdom, you have some passion. If you're listening to this, if you've stayed listening to this until now, you have so much wisdom. You are one of the people on the leading edge of consciousness. Like you probably already know a lot of this or you're at least open to this. Like you can make a big difference in the world. So let's do it together because when we collaborate, everything is so much faster and it's more fun. So stay tuned for more conferences, summits. We've got our Quantum Healers Alliance Facebook group. If you'd like to join, just search for Quantum Healers Alliance. If you know you're a match for this and whatever your modality is, whatever your skill set is, we'd love for you to come and bring it. Everybody has different pieces of the puzzle. When we work together, we've got the whole puzzle. We can help so many people.